Hi guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget, like our video, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon, ching ching ching. Today I'm going to be talking about diamonds and making traces for diamonds and honeycombs. But they're pretty much the same kind of trace. Um, there's also variations of it that you can do, lighter versions. And I'll talk about it just slightly on this uh, clinic as far as our traces go. Okay, start off with, I'm just going to clean, show you what I'm using. Obviously, parasite cutters, um, scissors our number five um, solid ring, our power swivel, 1-0 or number one, it's up to you. I'm gonna be doing one trace with our seven by seven black um, Surflon Supreme. It's a very soft, supple line, it works um, wire. It works very, very well at night time. Uh, obviously a sinker, some nasty super glue. 80 pound FC, fluorocarbon um, we've got 38 kilo kingfisher leader line you can use one more if you want but 38 is nice um, we've got some beads glow-in-the-dark beads and again it's just a stopper that's all it's there for our uh, dangle puller for our bait for later on I'm just gonna put it on that side and again I'm using 11-0 J-hooks or 8-0 J-hooks. 11-0 obviously for the bigger um, traces when you know the diamonds are around, when the honeycombs are around. The 8-0 for you're not sure if there's fish around. Okay, so it's a lighter trace that you tie with this. It's a more universal trace. You can catch sandies on it. You can catch honeycombs, diamonds, your flat fish. Uh, more universal compared to the, the heavier J-hook. And again, of course, 7-0 and 9-0, if I remember correctly, in our tuna circle looks. And again, exactly the same principle. Diamonds, honeycombs, when you know they're around, the smaller one for a more all-round kind of effect or trace. And again, for our bait demonstrations, I'm gonna be using our Kingfisher Saltwater Sports small dangle. Okay, let's get straight into it. I'll do a J-hook first and then the circle look. Circle hook to me is a much better hook. You don't hurt the fish as much, easier to take the hook out. You don't uh, hook the fish uh, deep down in their throats or foul hook them. I'm gonna do an, a nylon trace, which is very similar to the FMJ trace that we would use, except obviously we're using nylon. And I'm using the FC 80 pound. Uh, diameter is 8.5. You can use tennis racket string and other alternatives. Uh, very thick, one mil maxima. But this stuff is absolutely awesome for those big diamonds and honeycombs. And again, 1.6 meters, depending on your drop. And when I say drop, the distance from the tip of the rod to where your end of your bait is. Uh, the maximum one that you can go. For me, 1.6 is a good all round size. Okay, lovely. This fluorocarbon, like I said before, is very nice in that when you pull it, it lies straight, it's heavy, so it sits on the bottom. Exactly what I need um, when making my trace and for fishing for those lovely fish. So here we go, I need one of our beads. You can use two if you want, it's up to you. Uh, one is good enough for me. And I'm gonna use the number three power swivel for that. I know it looks a bit big, but when I do the trace, I'll explain to you why I use a bigger swivel for the nylon one. Okay, so I've got that. You can use the NT swivel as well if you want, but the NT swivel definitely works better on wire. So when I do the wire one, the NT swivel is there. Okay, let's go. J-hook. Everything will stay the same in this trace, whether I'm using an 8-0 or our 10-11-0 J-hook. Okay, the nylon, everything stays the same. The only thing that we change for the smaller fish and for the more all-round species is to use a smaller hook. That's it, it's as simple as that, guys. Okay, so you can see this fluorocarbon is all springy. 
when I pull it, you'll see how flat and how flat it actually lies. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do a figure of eight. That's all I'm doing onto the nylon. And to do a figure of eight, it's just three times around your finger. There we go. Take it through the back, over there. There we go. And slide down. Pull tight. There we go. Cut off a tag end. But you can leave a little bit of a burr on this one. Okay, when you pull it, it should settle down nicely. I'm going to take my bead, put my bead on. Take my swivel, put my swivel on. That's my sinker swivel. And then, of course, the big 1-0 or number 1. You can use a 2 2 it's up to you. One, two, three. And the reason we use a big swivel like that is, so when you're... Mm -hmm. So we use a big swivel like that, so when you actually got the fish close, your mate can go down and grab it in his hand, and the swivel sits over there. So he's got something to hold on to, and he can help you pull that diamond up onto the beach or the honeycomb onto the beach. Okay, that's the only reason why we use such a big swivel. I'm just going to pull the start quickly. I'm just going to put it down between my legs like that. And pull the knot tight, lovely. Cut that off. Okay, so what we've got is a trace that's running up and down. Now we need to put a stopper on. The way we do that, because it's nylon, is to put a figure of eight. Well, it's actually two figure of eights done with nylon and then a little drop of super glue on it. That'll stop it from moving down. And I'm gonna show you how we do it. Uh, you can use any old nylon, uh, anything from 21 kilos to 28, 30 kilos is up to you. There we go. You have some old nylon that I had from my leaders before. Just recycling nylon, it just makes it cheaper for you at the end of the day as well, making your traces. So we give this about 600 in length. 600, 700 is up to you, but 600 is, uh, is pretty good. Okay, figure of eight. Very simple, around the nylon. One, two, three, back through. Pull it up, let the nylon actually sit close. Just use your fingers, and again, You can either pull it tight like that or use a vise. I love a wire vise. And because I've got one here, I'm going to use it. Okay. There we go. Cut it off nice and neatly over there. And we just repeat the process again. One, two, three times. Back through. Slide the knot now down close to the second one. Okay, so it's two knots close to one another. I'm going to stick it back in the vise again. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So there are the two figure of eights next to one another. There we go, like that there. Then we take our super glue. And all I'm going to do is put one drop on the actual knot. And that just locks this whole thing in place. There we go. You can use UV knot sense if you want, which is a slight epoxy. Go outside, obviously the sun will activate it. Yeah, your finger will activate it, just the heat from your finger. And just roll it slowly through your fingers like that. There we go, it's done. I can feel it sticking to my fingers. I keep rolling, keep rolling, and it's done. Okay. There we go. So there's our trace. Now all I'm going to do is add the sinker trace to it, the sinker line. And like I said, I've got 38 kilo Kingfisher leader line. It's cheap, inexpensive, and it works. Nice and strong, nice and thick. 
We tie a figure of eight onto it. One, two, three. Take it back through. Pull tight. Cut off. Now, let's just make the length that we want it to be. I know how long I want it to be. There we go. Grab my sinker. Attach my sinker to it. <clears throat> when fishing for diamonds and honey cones, I find the best sinker you can use is a cone sinker, a grapnel. Sometimes does distract them a little bit. Um, I don't know whether it's the sparks when they go over it and sit on your bait, whether the sparks actually um, poke the honeycomb and the diamond and they, they seem to dart off very quickly. Um, cone sinker just works so much better. Another reason a cone sinker works so well is once you've got your diamond and you've hooked him and he's close to the beach, it's easy for someone to actually grab your sinker and hold the sinker that assists you when pulling the fish in or just holding him in the surge as the water sucks back you just hold on to the sinker you're using 38 kilo kingfish and nylon so it's got a bit of stretch in it but it won't break if you just hold on to it nicely and the reason we use that bigger swivel on it is so that you don't break the sinker off as well so a thicker Swivel over here has got a thicker R, so you've got less chance of actually breaking this off. If I used a thinner swivel, the swivel R would cut the nylon and of course, oops, your diamond will go back into the water and you're sitting with a sinker in your hand. So the sinker line we make very thick so that you can actually hold on to it and it assists you in pulling the diamond up onto the beach. It's as simple as that guys. Trick that we learned over the years, it just helps you. Okay, so there's your fully made J-hook trace. Obviously, we're going to put a dangle on there and we'll be good to go. So I'm just going to grab a dangle and just show you. So these are our Kingfisher saltwater sports traces. And I'll just grab a dangle. Get one of them. There we go. And on the dangles, one side has got a silicon tube and the other one's obviously got the loop so the silicon tube goes through the the actual hook onto the eye like so so if you want to dangle it you can it's up to you I've done it because I'm gonna show you how we do the bait so there we go it's as simple as that guys that's gonna then hook onto the loop there And there's our trace made up, ready to go. And again, like I said, everything stays the same. You can just go smaller on the hook and you can target multiple species. The reason we use a bigger, thicker hook is when fishing for diamonds, you don't want to tear the hook out with a very small hook. So preferably use a thicker hook. It's as simple as that, guys. Okay, so that's done.